Hello, everyone. Praise God. Praise God. I pray that you are having a blessed day in the Lord. Give him honor and give him praise. Give him the glory. If you understand my title, my title is God allows a crisis to expose your faith or the lack of. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I mean, y'all should already know. This is the 13th day of the um, 21 day Daniel fast. Whenever you fast, God exposes everything in your life, people around you, even the world. If you are a prophet, come on somebody. Hallelujah. So let me tell you what God told me. And I'm going to start off with Joel. I'm in the book of Joel chapter one, verse 14. It says, sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord, your God, and cry unto the Lord. And this was the word of God. Let me tell you something was happening. We keep treating this whole world as if it's not God's. Back in the old days, what they used to do if they had a problem, from Esther on down, they would call a fast. Everybody would fast. Come on, somebody. Because he knew that he had to get, the king knew he had to get God's attention. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. What am I saying in this hour? People don't want to fast. As a matter of fact, God even gave me a revelation, and I'm not going to try to down nobody. I was sitting down last night, and God said, why do you think they have fast food? Why, did, why do you think they call it fast food? He said, because the, first, the last thing the enemy wants you to do is to fast. Because he know if you fast, you're going to get power from on high. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And so I said, okay, God, we was talking about the coronavirus, the Delta variant, everything. I, God said, I allow crisis to expose people's faith or the lack thereof. Come on, somebody. It, it, it's real, isn't it? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. What's happening today is that people have lost their faith because God have allowed so much hardness, so much things. And guess what? It's not going to get better. So you can just stop all that. However, God say, but it's going to push you close to me. You see that pain exposes your purpose and your destiny. That pain pushes you closer to God. That pain purifies you. That pain subdues you. That pain make you cry to God like never before in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. And I'm a witness. Y'all know I'm a witness. I, 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 I have to be honest and transparent like I always am. It wasn't until my dad died and my uncles and my aunt and a close friend who I had loved. Yes, I'm talking about a guy. We wasn't together or anything like that, but I've always loved you. You know, you always love somebody. You, you just can't be together. All those deaths pushed me closer to God. But in the inside, it, it was very hard. It was very hard. And I saw myself just spiral. I said, oh, God, what do you do? He said, you got to fast and pray your way out of this because it's a crisis. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm talking about a crisis this morning. What people don't understand is that God will allow a crisis in your life to expose the level of faith or the lack thereof. I can honestly tell you today I have more faith than I ever had. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. What is your faith level at this time, says God? Because we love God when everything's going good. Oh, come on, somebody. You don't grow in good times. You grow in bad times. See, good times, you're so busy having a good time. You ain't thinking about nothing. Hallelujah. Everything's good. But boy, let something happen. Loss of a job. Loss of a spouse. Loss of a daughter. Loss of a son. Just lost, period. It will hit you to the core of your spirit. And God is not trying to hurt you. God is not trying to, 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 to take you to a dark place. What God is trying to do is open up the life of prayer, the life of fasting, the life of obedience. Hallelujah. God is trying to show you, you. You didn't hear what I just said. God is trying to show you, you. Because right now, we're in a dangerous place. And I'm looking around and I'm seeing it. And honestly, I never thought I would live to see what I'm seeing. People have forgotten God. People have forgotten God. I'm going to say that again. People have forgotten God. How do I say that? Oh, oh I, I got I to gotta walk this thing out. There's a difference between praise and worship. We love to praise God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But worship, worship takes you to a deeper place. Worship say, God, I love you. Let, let, let's, let, let's be real. Something hits you to the core of your spirit and you lose everything. Honey, I, I bet you start acting right then. Because guess what? You'll go back to simplicity. All I need is a babe, something to eat, and a car maybe. Y'all don't hear what I just said. 
When the crisis hits your life, it exposes the real, what's really important. You stop playing them games because you see you in a situation and the only person can get you out is God. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God up in here. People play too much. And I tell people all the time, you could play with me, you could play with this, that, but don't play with God. Come on, somebody, hallelujah, because God will show you. God will show you. And, and God will show you so cool until I promise you, you're not going to be the same. It will yield the peaceable fruit of the Spirit, says God. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. What am I talking about this morning? Increase your faith and decrease being attached to this world and the things thereof. Uh, when I look back on, on the church and I look back on everything, we've gotten too complex. What am I saying? People run after the bag. People run after this. People run after that. And the only time you want to really call on God is when something happened. I am learning this. So this is a process for everybody. You better pray before things happen. We want to pray when things happen. No, you got to pray before things happen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The reason why the church ain't got no power because we don't fast enough. And after this 21 day fast, I'm going on another fast. I'm training myself. God took me on a journey when I was in Sacramento. Everything was different. So I think over the years, I don't know what happened, but something happened. Be real. And I said, God, I, I see where you want me. Not back where I was, because God don't go backwards. But on a deeper level, deeper than when I was in Sacramento. Because I, I you have to be on it. No, let, let me just be real. You got to fall in love again with God. You got to fall in love and God, again with God and fall out of love with this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fall in love with God again. How do you do it, prophetess? What you got to do is you got to say, God, I want you first. Six, Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And everything else should be added to you. It is time to seek God first again. That's why God got me up on this live. And I know I hit some pivotal points, but that's the, this is the main one. He said, fall back in love with me. Make me first again. You wonder why you're going through. You wonder why you feel the way you feel. You wonder why. He said, because I'm not first in your life. What have you, what have you put before God? Is it a husband? Is it a wife? Is it money? Is it honey? Is it funny? And you say, no. What do you mean? Who do you spend the most time with? We got to go back. And I'm about to show y'all something. We got to go back to Bible. And I'm talking about this Bible. I'm not talking about no phone. I'm not talking about no electric. You better. Let me tell you something. I think I'm getting ready to do another Bible study online. But it's going to be teaching the whole Bible. I think that's what God put in my spirit. It's time to go back to Bible. I'm talking about touching the cover of a Bible. I'm talking about flipping the pages. Come on, somebody. It's something about when you flip pages. You see, I'm telling you. I feel so full by the Spirit. Y'all have to excuse me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This fast ain't no joke. This fast is taking me on a deeper level. I can't even imagine to try to tell y'all. But I will say this. God want that word inside and outside of you. That word will change you. That word will purify you. That word will strengthen you. That word will keep you. That word will, will give you wisdom and discernment. And that's what people need in this hour. There's a spirit of deception going around like I've never seen. I've never seen the level of deception that I'm seeing, and people are falling for it. You got pastors. I'm going here. I don't care who get mad. You can say in the comments what you want to say. Pastors taking that shot. Pastors, hold on. Preachers, you, you, you can't come in my church unless the shot. What is this live called? Exposing the faith or the lack thereof. Now, hold on. Hold on. Let me make myself, let me clarify something. Do what God tell you to do. If God tell you to do, do whatever. But if God don't tell you to do it, because you can say what you want to say. I told y'all a second hit was coming. What if I tell you a third hit is coming? These people have built up momentum. They're getting ready to go now. They're getting ready to go. Your faith has to increase on a level that you have never seen before. Because I'm telling you right now, the next hit is going to be more than the first hit and the second hit. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. These people are not playing. Oh, let me quit saying these people. The kingdom of darkness is not playing. And the kingdom of God have got to come up to the level. We got to come up. You can't do it the way you've been doing it. Come on, somebody. The old church don't work no more like that. This old, new, new church. You're going to have to fast. And you're going to have to pray, says God. Hallelujah. And you have to be obedient. And you're going to have to have wisdom and discernment. Hallelujah. 
It's time to go back to the threshing flow. I'm talking about for real, the threshing flow. God, what do you say, God? Too many opinions, too many books, too, too, just too much stuff. Go back to God, he says. He said, go back to my word. Y'all don't hear. Searching for everybody. And they renamed demons. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm about to preach this thing up in here today. Mental health. All they did was rename everything. They got you looking for motivational speakers. They got you looking for doctors. They, I'm not saying doctors not good. Don't, don't get it twisted. But they got you looking to everything else but God. When I read this Bible and I see how ancestors did it, they put God first. God still heals. God still delivers. God is still a miracle worker. Hallelujah to his name. The God I know, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he'll heal you in your sleep. He'll heal your mama. He'll heal your daddy. Oh, come on, somebody. Who do you believe more in these days? Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God said, it's time to trust in me. It's time to believe in me again. Hallelujah. And I truly believe God, God, God has a way of doing things. I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm going to share something with you. How I know God is a keeper. God showed me about maybe four or five years ago. He said, Danny, you're a worshiper. And you're a true worshiper. Let me tell you how real it was. I was in the studio recording my song, remember? What if I tell you when I sat down, the Holy Spirit fell upon me. I started ministering to these two young ladies. And you should see the power of God. I saw them. I saw the power of God. And one of them, I don't really think she was saved. And she said, I could tell you love God. It was her look. It penetrated. Hold on. I'm not bragging on me. You just walk with me. I saw the power of God move. And I keep hearing God say, it's the worship in this hour that's going to keep people. It's the worship in this hour that's going to give you your breakthrough. It's the worship in this hour that's going to heal you. It's the worship in this hour that's going to deliver you. It's the worship in this hour that's going to prosper you. It's the worship, God says. He said, because that's how they did it from the beginning and I require it at the end. Ain't nothing new, new. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And I'm not trying to dog nobody, but I got to say something. I love music, especially God music. It's hard to find. Oh, God, I got to say it. And I'm not a hater, y'all. I'm just real. It's hard to find a worship. It's hard to find a worship. A worshiper in this hour. That lives it, that talks it, that breathes it, that truly honors God. Does anybody understand what I'm saying in this hour? God wants your worship, people. He wants your obedience. He wants you to be very obedient in this hour. God say, if, if you just fall down and worship me, I'll bless you. I'll keep you. I'll heal you. So many people are in pain in this hour. And the attention span is about that small. Because if a person is not doing something, just thank you, Lord. The TikTok, all this stuff God told me that people be doing. What if I tell you most of that is rituals? Oh, and I got something else to tell y'all. Y'all not going to like this part, but that's fine. You know that, that scholarship challenge, disrespecting your parents, thinking it's funny about being a prostitute and stuff like that? Don't you see all of these rituals? They're getting you to disrespect your parents. When the Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother, you don't play games like that. You don't play games like that with your elders. You don't do that. I'm just telling you everything that God has hitting, been hitting on, been hitting on. They're just telling me. I'm just watching it. And people think, just for a laugh, just to go viral. If you don't see how the enemy has came and have tried to take the morals and turn it into immorality, the integrity... And turn it to dirt, just nastiness. Y'all don't see what's happening in this hour? This is the great falling away, said the Lord. Don't be one that falls away, God says. Hallelujah to his name. I said hallelujah to his name. Repent, said the Lord. Repent while you can. Hallelujah. This is real. This is real. So many people playing in this hour. Just repent. Say, God help me. God keep me. God teach me. 
And God has sent somebody to reach you. God has sent somebody to speak to your spirit, said God. Hallelujah, I say. So I pray that everybody understand what I'm saying this morning. I'm going to read that, 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 um, I feel the power of God, y'all, y'all. When the power of God overtake you, you feel like you're in another world. The book of Joel, chapter 1 says, verse 14. Sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. That's where we at in this hour. It's not about just getting money. It's not just about getting a house. It's not just about getting a car. It's not just about being successful. What is it to gain the whole world and lose your soul? And people are losing their soul right in the church, truth be told. It's not too late. As long as you got breath in your body, it's not too late. But you got to come back to God with a whole heart. Not half a heart. Not, God, I'm going to do what you want. Some of the times, this has to be every day, every hour, every night. God, I give you my life. I surrender. I surrender it all to you. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say, even if it costs me my life. That's where we at. That's where we at. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Woo! So I just pray that you... Just do what God wants you to do, man. Just do it. My spirit cries for people. Not to judge them. Mm -mm. But to love them back to life. But I still got to tell you the truth. I'm mandated. We don't want to tell people the truth no more. We got people preaching and doing different. We got people singing and, you know, worshiping. In the church. Knowing they clubbing and doing have tainted the sanctuary. I heard God say just this morning, he said, if you touch not the unclean thing, I'll keep you. That's for everybody. Touch not the unclean thing. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is, Miss Juanita. He is exposing in this hour. He's exposing your intents, your input, your output. As a matter of fact, this is what I see in the spirit. The line is being drawn. Who's God? And who's not? And you can't fake that, honey. Hallelujah! I feel the power of God. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Tiffany, that's that's good. She said, we are afraid to lose friends and family. But, I, oh, my God. Honey, that's real. That one is real. Well, I I, I don't have a problem with that, apparently. Because <laughs> they get mad. Because I'm going to say what God said to say. And then if they don't want to hear it. What I've done is I'm not going to argue with nobody. I used to do that. I, I just shut my mouth and I start praying under my breath. I say, God, keep them. God bless them. I intercede for them. So we have to start interceding for people like never before. Hallelujah. So um, God bless you. God keep you. Y'all know uh, I need your help. I need your help. Um, I'm trying to get a building here because I, 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 want, I just want to do what God want me to do. Whatever that is. Minister face to face. Teach face to face. I'm ready. Like I've never been. <laughs> I feel like you had to push me into my purpose. You know, you know how you know, but you're not quite sure if you're ready. I'm ready now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, took me this long. But at least I'm ready, right? As long as you have breath in your body, you can do what thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm going to put a link up in there after I finish this. And if you feel led to sow, sow. If you don't, pray. It is what it is. But I love you. I love you. I love you. I don't even have to know you to love you. And if you don't love me, that's fine too. Love you anyway. <laughs> so just be encouraged, especially in this hour. The enemy is trying to take your spirit. The enemy is trying to... Let me tell you what the enemy is trying to do. The same thing he's always been doing. <laughs> Still kill and destroy. He'll use anybody or anything. Stop being offended. Oh, thank you, Lord. I hear you, Holy Ghost. Stop being offended in this hour. I, I, I ain't gonna lie. I used to get so offended. Oh, my God. Because, you know, people can do the most. I stopped doing that. My new word is, okay. And I pray. Somebody write that in the comments. Okay. And pray. Okay. And pray. The enemy is slick in this hour. 
He don't want you to fast and pray. Because you get power from on high. I see it in my life. I'm telling you what I know. And it's not easy. But it's real. You need to do that. It's a lifestyle. Because I'm getting ready to make it a lifestyle. So I'm telling y'all, let me do my disclaimer right now. I'm getting ready to lose a lot of weight because I'm going on fast after fast after fast. I'm telling y'all. So ain't nothing wrong with me. I just got to get it. I don't have time to play. I don't have time. Some of us are truly called. And when you called for real, you got to do this thing for real. It's a stink, you Lord. I hear you. It's a sacrifice. And if I got to push back to play for four, five months to the end of this year and go into the next year too, then so be it. I'll do it, Lord. I'll do it, Lord. I'll do it. I'll sacrifice whatever and whoever. Oh, come on, somebody. Now, hold on. Let me clarify that. That means if, if I have an attachment, sacrifice, I mean, if I have an attachment that's not of God, cut it. I love you, but I can't be, I can't be involved in that. Mm-mm. My ma'am. And some of y'all are attached to things that you know you shouldn't be attached to. But I love them. You love them? Give them to God, baby. Give them to God. Because you can't change nobody. Oh, I learned that the heart. You can't change nobody. Your position is to pray for them. Pray and release. Somebody write that in the comments. Pray and release. I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to release you. God bless you. Hallelujah. So God bless you. And God keep all of you. Please get in your word. Please spend time with God. Please pray over your family. Please, every day, every day, every day, don't let up, don't let up, because the enemy's not letting up. He's trying to take us all with him, and I ain't going to hell. You could write that in the comments, too. I ain't going to hell. You heard me. For nobody. Hallelujah. But you got to pray over your children in this hour. You got to pray over your um, over your um, neighborhood. You got to pray over your city. This is the hour of prayer. Thank you, Lord. I hear you. Worship and prayer. That's your weapons of warfare. That's your weapon. So they keep trying to call, trying to stop my um live. I'm already getting off. I tell you, the enemy don't want you to hear the truth. Because the truth is, the church got money. Look, you don't see as many here. You got all the money, the most beautiful churches. Everybody looking good. Can I just be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost? Can I be healed? Can I just be delivered? Can I be set free from the things that's hurting me? That's more precious than anything you could give me. Hallelujah. So God bless you. God keep you. Y'all know what time it is. Roll our soldiers for that is truly who we are. God bless you all. Bye-bye.